All right, it's summer, it's sunny. I decided I need a new pair of sunglasses. Sunglasses are a little bit of an obsession for me and I already own several dozen pairs, so why not just one more? I walk into a store and try on maybe 35 pairs of sunglasses before finally coming across just the right one. It's a big decision. I have a weird shaped head, so I need to make sure they're the right fit. They're a pair of Ray-Bans, one of my favorite brands. Glasses in hand, I strut over to the register. The young woman graciously rings me up and offers me an insurance plan, which I'm way too smart to pay that extra $10 for. Not today, Satan. Anyway, I pay around 200 bucks. I leave, and as I'm walking to my car, excited to put these bad boys on, I pull them out of the box, and that's when tragedy strikes. No! I drop them. I pick them up, desperately praying they're not damaged. Hands shaking, holding back tears. I look down and I see scuffs and scratches on the frame and lenses. I reasonably and correctly start to spew a series of expletives into the sky. Why did this happen to me? Why is there no justice in this world? Why did I just pay $200 for such a flimsy piece of plastic? In the midst of my despair, and in typical Kenan fashion, I start to research. Why the hell are sunglasses so expensive? As it turns out, marketing. Did you know in 1998, you could buy a pair of Ray-Bans at any convenience store for about 15 to 20 bucks? Today, that same pair of Ray-Bans sell anywhere between 150 and $300. That's more than a 10X markup. This is because a company called Luxottica has its marketers working overtime to convince you to pay more for sunglasses. Now, I'm an avid sunglasses collector. At the end of this video, I'll share some strategies with you that I use to get high quality sunglasses without signing away my firstborn or taking out a mortgage. Hey, I'm Kenan, and you're paying way too much for sunglasses. Before I begin, like and subscribe? Cool, thanks. Sunglasses have a history going all the way back to prehistoric times. Before the invention of lenses, ancient Inuits used to shield their eyes from the bright sun by wearing goggles with tiny slits in them. Emperor Nero in ancient Rome used to watch gladiators fight through lenses made from cut emeralds. The real precursor to modern day sunglasses popped up more than 800 years ago in China, where they wore cut dark quartz crystals over their eyes to block the sun's glare. Interestingly, ancient Chinese judges also used to wear them to hide their facial expressions in court. In the 1700s, we started seeing the rise of tinted glass lenses. In the early 1900s, someone added UV protective cerium to glass lenses, developing the first iteration of the true modern day sunglasses and leading to more widespread use. In 1929, a dude named Sam Foster developed the first ever plastic sunglasses made from celluloid. And I'm not making this up, they were first sold on the Jersey Shore. Yeah, buddy. In 1936, Edwin H. Land invented polarized lenses, and that same year, the first pair of Ray-Bans were sold by a company called Bosch & Lomb. Through the 50s and 60s, Ray-Bans cemented their iconic brand image because their innovative design and unique style attracted various movie, music, and sports stars. But somewhere along the way, the market for Ray-Bans became saturated, designs became outdated. By the 1990s, they weren't as trendy or as innovative as they used to be. They became low quality, mass produced plastic throwaways. Ray-Bans became something your cheap uncle might buy on a road trip to Wally World. In 1999, a company called Luxottica bought Ray-Bans for $640 million. And that brings us to now, hundreds of dollars for flimsy plastic eye protection. But how did Luxottica revitalize the image of Ray-Bans? Well, they used marketing to rebuild the entire brand around exclusivity. They made it appear that not everyone can just own a pair of Ray-Bans. Despite the fact that everyone seems to own a pair, Luxottica marketers are unparalleled masters at building exclusivity around their products. They've been doing it since the company was founded in 1961, and they've spent the last 20 years transforming a brand of average Joe sunglasses into a trendy, edgy, Tom Cruise-worthy brand. And they did it by making some really risky moves. First, they cut the supply of Ray-Bans to the market. No joke, Luxottica literally stopped all sales of Ray-Bans for more than a year. Between 1999 and 2000, you could not find a single pair of Ray-Bans on the market. Luxottica marketers didn't spend that downtime resting on their laurels. They spent the time planning an epic relaunch that started with a full overhaul of Ray-Bans brand image. They moved production from China to Italy, firstly to improve the quality of sunglasses. 
And secondly, and perhaps more importantly, they wanted to brand Ray-Bans made in Italy because that comes with a certain pedigree and exclusivity that China just cannot provide. When Luxottica finally reintroduced Ray-Bans into the market, they released them only through Sunglass Hut, which they own and some other high-end retailers. This came with a hefty price tag too, almost 10 times what they were being sold for just a year before. Gone were the days of buying Ray-Bans with a Snickers bar and a bag of peanuts. But Keenan, if they improve the quality of Ray-Bans, doesn't that warrant a price hike? Sure, but the LA Times interviewed a former Luxottica executive who said producing a pair of high-end sunglasses today costs somewhere between 17 and $20. He was quoted as saying the price of sunglasses is a complete ripoff. But I leave it up to you. Do you think paying $200 for a quality set of sunglasses is a ripoff? Let me know what you think in the comments below. The rebrand and relaunch of Ray-Bans also came with a whole new brand story. But what is a brand story? Brand stories are narratives designed for a product that bring out emotional reactions from buyers. Ray-Bans brand story is about rebellion counterculture, sticking it to the man. Luxottica marketers want you to put on a pair of Ray-Bans and feel cool. They want you to feel unique, confident. They want Ray-Bans brand story to transport you back to a time when cool as hell, rebellious, sexy superstars like James Dean and Muhammad Ali used to rock Ray-Bans. Remember when Tom Cruise brought us all to our sexual awakening in Top Gun? To recapture that feeling of cool, they launched the Never Hide campaign, led by Slash from Guns N' Roses. Luxottica marketers wanted to connect Ray-Ban's brand story to Slash's rebellious, unique rock star public persona. And it was off to the races. 15 years later, Ray-Ban's brand story still revolves around imagery of beautiful people strung out, smoking cigarettes, not giving a damn about your opinion because they're rebels, that's why. And if you want to be slash level cool, you're going to have to pay for it. And to keep us willing to auction off our kidneys for their sunglasses, Luxottica's marketers aren't afraid to keep Ray-Bans on the cutting edge of technology, culture, or politics. At the time, a unique aspect of the Never Hide campaign is that it was one of the first successful YouTube campaigns way back in 2007. It showed that Luxottica marketers are willing to gamble on new technologies. They were one of the first major brands to adopt YouTube as a marketing platform, and through the years, their marketers have shown a pattern of taking risks and spending millions to be on the cutting edge. In 2013, they launched a remix campaign promoting their new customizable approach to sunglasses. They allowed users to mix and match different styles and colors to create their own unique sunglasses. That isn't a particularly special thing in itself, but the centerpiece of their whole campaign was an online tool that allowed you to see in real time what your new sunglasses would look like before you even bought them. Back in the early 2010s, it was so cutting edge, it was basically witchcraft. And instead of burning them at the stake, the public bought more of their really expensive sunglasses. To stay on the cutting edge, Luxottica is focused on reinventing the experience of owning a pair of Ray-Bans through technology. In 2021, they partnered with Meta, Facebook, to launch Ray-Ban Stories. These were sunglasses designed to capture and create content for social media without the need to pull out your phone, right from the sunglasses. Yes, Snapchat technically did it first, but those glasses were ugly. And who uses Snapchat anymore? Luxottica marketers don't shy away from polarizing topics either. In 2012, on the heels of a landmark Supreme Court decision legalizing same-sex marriage, Luxottica marketers generated a huge uproar for featuring a gay couple in an ad. It was an extension of the Never Hide campaign, at that point going five years strong, celebrating people throughout history who lived their lives the way they wanted to. Love is love, baby! Taking risks to be on the cutting edge has really paid off for Luxottica. In the decades since they bought Ray-Bans, their marketing has turned them into the most successful sunglasses brand in the world. They account for nearly 30% of Luxottica's eyewear sales. Considering how big Luxottica is, that's insane. I'll tell you what, even as a jaded marketer who's skeptical of every brand I really come across, something about Ray-Bans just speaks to me. I think that's the power and the genius of Luxottica's marketing. They connect with your reptilian brain in a way other brands just don't. That being said, yes, I love Ray-Bans personally, but my kids gotta eat, so I can't only buy sunglasses that would bankrupt Greece. So over the years, I've picked up a few tricks to get a good deal on sunglasses, Ray-Bans or other brands. This isn't exactly a secret, but Luxottica owns roughly 80% of the sunglasses market, so it's hard to get around their pricing most of the time. I've included a list of all their brands in the description below so you have a point of reference and can tell what is and is not a Luxottica brand. Here are some rules I follow to get the best deals on sunglasses. Firstly, 
I rarely buy a pair of sunglasses at retail. I usually avoid buying them as Sunglass Hut especially or other Luxottica owned retailers unless they're having a massive sale, which is rare most of the time. Secondly, I don't recommend you buy fake designer sunglasses. And it's not because I care about poor billion dollar multinational monopoly Luxottica. It's because those $25 pair of Roybons you buy from that guy, shady guy on the street corner are usually crap. They fall apart after a few uses and just they're not even worth $25. Third, if you're hunting for a pair of Ray-Bans or other designer sunglasses, outlet stores like Nordstrom Rack, TJ Maxx, Saks Off Fifth are great places to look. You can often find sunglasses there for 50% or less below retail. Another store you can find a great pair of Ray-Bans at much less than retail, my happy place, Costco. I love Costco. I've compiled a list of some of my favorite non-Luxotica brands in the description below for you, some of which you might have even seen throughout this video. I have no affiliation with any of the brands or any of the stores that I've talked about. I just really, really like sunglasses. So check everything out. Tell me what you think in the comments below. There, now you're an expert. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you like it, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell below. Check out my other videos too. Special thanks to Alan Luntz for his editing wizardry, Dr. Tayyib Sheikh for keeping me for spending our children's college fund on sunglasses, and to Ahmed Kazmi of OK for providing this sick soundtrack to this video. All of them have links below. Please check them out. Bye.